Hello, in this video we're going to talk about the Productivity Improvement Roadmap. This is a tool designed to help you improve the productivity of your business. We're going to start with a target and before that we're going to start with a measure of how productive your business is right now. So the first thing to put in is current revenue, presumably over the last 12 months or so and total employment costs over the same period and you can see that this gives us a productivity ratio of 3.33 for this demonstration business let's suppose your targets are slight improvement or increase in revenue and you're going to do it with the same employment costs so you can see you've got a clear productivity ratio measure which is demonstrating an improvement in productivity. So that's the target you're aiming for. Let's talk about individual processes first. If we look at marketing, well, first of all, down here in the process name, we've got the core line of business processes for this particular demonstration business. And we're gonna start uh, with marketing. We'll look at marketing as a typical process. So the owner of this process called marketing is Joe. Why is it important to have an owner? Because if you want people to achieve targets, they've got to have clear ownership of that target and that process. If everything belongs to you, don't expect Joe to do anything much about improving the way marketing works. So we've agreed with Joe that the measure of the productivity measure for marketing is a cost per inquiry. And we've worked out our current cost per inquiry is 42 quid. And we'd like to get that down to 35 pounds. So presumably costs being more or less the same, we're looking at generating more inquiries. Next column is, is this process a bottleneck, which, is, which means is it the process that defines the overall limit on revenue for the business? Answer for marketing in this business, no it is not. So I'm gonna leave that at no. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about quality control for this process. Is there any input quality control? Well, no, there is not. And that wouldn't be unusual in marketing as it kind of starts the, the whole process uh, sequence within a business. Do we have any output quality control? Well, yes, we do. So that's great. And what is that output quality control? Well, we're measuring defects here and we can see that we're running at 20% defects. Now a defect in marketing terms, if it's an inquiry that you're producing, a defect in the inquiry presumably means it wasn't a very good inquiry. It wasn't perhaps something you could actually supply or someone you could supply or, um, you know, they were, the inquiry wasn't a genuine inquiry. So that, uh, in this process, is, is counting as a defect. And you can see this is pretty, pretty substantial. So one in five inquiries is no good. So, you know, that gives us some hope of, of, of getting this uh, productivity improvement. Okay, next question. Is the uh, process of marketing documented? Well, some documentation. So, not unusual. We've got one or two documentation uh, things that are documented, but not the whole process. What about our system support for marketing? That's pretty good. Great. Probably got a CRM system in place, so you know, not, nothing much we can do here. But here we've got, you know, We've got some defect room for action. We've got perhaps some documentation room for action. So what are we going to put in our actual action column? Well, actually, this, for this process, we've said there are two actions. One, we're going to improve targeting. Two, we're going to improve or make qualification earlier. So having looked at this, it looks as if perhaps we're attracting the wrong kind of inquiry. Our marketing targeting is slightly off. And secondly, perhaps we're not disqualifying inquiries early enough in the process. So we're ending up counting them as inquiries when they shouldn't really be appearing. So there's, there's a two, um, so there's our two actions for um, improving the marketing process to achieve our target of uh, uh, productivity improvement of um, you know, 42 pounds per inquiry down to 35 pounds per inquiry or more inquiries. Okay, next section is strategy. Um, so let's talk about strategy. First of all, we've got, a, again, a process list here. You'll notice that some of these are the same, so marketing appears again. 
but some are different. So we've got a thing called integration here. Um, and we've got a thing called consultancy here. Neither of these appear. So this looks like stuff that goes on in the industry. Other people are doing it now. But we're thinking strategically, is this something we would like to be doing? So, so let's work through this for, for a process or two. So we'll start with assembly. Column buyer assets is about things that we own or know that would be difficult for others to, uh, to acquire or, or learn. So these prevent other competitors coming into this space. It prevents new entrants. Okay? So here we're saying in assembly, well, we've got a factory and we've got some special machinery. So you know, pretty expensive stuff, difficult to set up. So yeah, those are good buyer assets. How much value is added? Now, value added in this column is um, not value added in an economic sense. It's a, it's a, just an assessment. Um, and we're saying that in terms of um, uh, what our customers pay us, the margin we're adding to whatever it is we make, the fact that we assemble it ourselves, the assembly stage is a pretty high value added stage. I mean, no big surprise, you know, without assembling the thing, it's not worth much to anyone. We're looking at the linkage to strategy column now. How important to our strategy is it that we own the assembly stage? Again, we're saying it's high. Um, we're saying that you know our positioning in the marketplace, maybe it's about quality of production or perhaps it's technically advanced, but something about the way we assemble it is supporting or contributing to our strategic positioning. So it's a high uh, linkage to strategy the fact that we do assembly. And then we said, what about employment uh, intensity? Well, employment intensity is how many people are involved in doing this, uh, also how rare are the skills, how difficult to acquire, how difficult to keep hold of. So basically, what's the hassle factor of, of retaining this capability in here? So we're saying that is also high. Okay. How do we measure the cost of production? Well, cost per unit, it's a bit of a cop out on, on this particular uh, process assembly, but it's almost always something to do with cost per unit. We're not sure what a unit is, but um, I don't know, it might be a kitchen or something, or, a, or a, I don't know, a car, whatever. Anyway, this is what it costs us to produce each of these units in pounds. Um, we're saying um, currently our, our uh, internal costs, we've worked all out, you know, labor, materials, absorption costs and so on and so forth, it's costing 620 quid per unit to produce. And we've gone outside and looked at what the, you know, if we went to a, some kind of batch manufacturer, what would they charge us for this? And they they could do it cheaper. It looks, you know, our quotes have come in, it's all 590 quid. Not dramatically cheaper, but, you know, significant enough to make a difference to our profitability. So, um, so we're looking at these, um, these six or seven factors and deciding about this strategically, this process, you know, where does it belong? And, and actually we're saying there is no action. This is in the right place. We could maybe save a few bob by, by getting someone else to do it. We could perhaps save some, some employment hassle, but actually this is so important to our strategic position and we, we need to keep it in house. Now, let's look at a, another one, integration. This is something we don't do right now. So we're looking outside the business and saying, well, if we look at this integration thing, so um, I'm again, not sure what this industry is, but, but, but essentially putting this together with things provided by other people to turn it into a working solution, often done in software and uh, technology. But, you know, it could be you could integrate um, you know, a kitchen into a, a building project, let's say. But anyway, we're saying we, we're looking at an integration stage and the two barrier assets are things that would be difficult for us to get hold of or acquire to do this. We've decided our technical skills and some kind of methodology, some know-how about how to integrate these things. Okay, let's, um, let's move on then. How much value is added? Well, we're saying, you know, if from a customer's perspective, which is really the only perspective that counts, that putting this together into a workable solution is really high value. In fact, without it, it's not, you know, the, the widget or whatever we've made is not worth um, that much. So, you know, this is a high value step in the overall value chain 
of putting this together for a customer. Um, we've decided linkage to strategies is medium. Um, so no, we're not clear on here what our strategy is, but um, let's suppose it's it's about you know the quality, the technical quality of or functionality of what we produce. You know, integration of that is is maybe a bit of a stretch, a little bit outside what we we might do. But um, so nevertheless, we'll look at it. And then we've also looked at employment intensity, and this is going to be high. Well. You can see that here, technical skills and methodology, that means we've got skilled people, um, they'll be in demand in the marketplace, so you know we've got a high hassle factor here of, of attempting to include this in our offering. Um, what's our cost of production? Well, if these are technical skills, I mean, it's cost per hour, you know, what's it going to cost us per, to own these skills and to deliver them on site per hour, so cost per hour. Um, we think we can do it for 30. Don't know if we got to that figure, but presumably looked at salaries, on costs, you know, the utilization, so on and so forth, and figured out actually it seems a little bit low, but we figured out it's going to be 30 quid an hour to, uh, to to own these skills. What's the marketplace charge for this? What's our, you know, if we're using someone else to do this now, or we're working with someone else, what are they charging? Well, way higher, you know, 100 pounds. So this is the kind of full. Uh, uh, retail price, if you like, in the marketplace. We're paying that, it would cost us this. So what's our action? Looking at all of these factors, looking at a strategic option to say we could get into integration, you know, grow our business by doing integration as well. What's our decision? Well, actually, what we're looking at is we, we think we might investigate this further and we might acquire. So there's some things that are really saying do it, and then there are some things that are really saying don't do it. Don't do it. So we need to investigate this. We're going to launch a project to do a business case to add this to our strategy. Okay, in the final area, we're going to look at leadership. Now, how does leadership uh, impact productivity? Well, here are four areas, four key behaviors that leadership, good leaders exhibit uh, which, uh, in order to drive productivity, which is essentially motivation and um, accountability of, of your staff. And we just got a simple assessment here, how are we doing or how are you as a leader doing in each of these? So there's a simple shared compelling purpose. Well, we're partially there. Um, what am I gonna do about it? I'm gonna continue discussing, a two-way discussion in team meetings about what our purpose is, you know, what our vision is. So this is a long-term, um, grind really me getting to this shared compelling purpose have we got effective regular communication yes we have okay well what am i going to do about that no i'm just going to carry on doing what i'm doing so this is the way you'd use this final area of leadership so in summary the way you use this product productivity improvement roadmap is you look at what your productivity is now in terms of productivity ratio. You set a target for where you've got to be. It doesn't need to be hugely uh, challenging to, in order to have a significant impact on your business. We look at processes. You know, the processes in your business, you can obviously change these to match your business. For each process, we look at how productive that process is, where the areas are for improvement, and we come up with a little action plan. We look at strategy, which moves outside what we do now and looks at things that we might do or stop doing and gives us a very simple kind of model to look at those and think about a possible strategic actions. And finally, we look at leadership, which is the four leadership behaviours that really drive motivation, accountability and productivity in the business. And we come up with a little assessment and an action plan to improve that. Okay, hope you found that useful.